G'day guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can show loading elements on the screen based on whether a back-end workflow has completed. So quite easy to do client side, so if a user clicks on a button we can show a loading screen, but if your action sends a back-end workflow that takes minutes to complete, there's no real way for you to alert the user on the client side that that backend workflow has completed. Okay, so to do that, what we're gonna do is, first thing we're gonna do is trigger off our, our workflow. Okay, so rather than running a workflow that does a bunch of things, um, because we may want the user to continue doing something else in the app. So for example, let's say they're uploading a bunch of large files, uh, if that's going to take a long time on the server, um, we want the user to be able to continue using the app. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to schedule um, a backend workflow. And I've just got one called uploading files. And now um, when this backend workflow is triggered, this is where we're going to put um, whatever it is that our our app is going to complete. Okay, so for the first step, we're gonna schedule a workflow called inaction start. And then when it's completed, we're gonna trigger inaction end. Okay, so for example, I've got this one and I'm just gonna trigger inaction end. And we're just gonna say for simulation effects after five seconds. Okay, so rather than for me to go and build a bunch of workflows that are going to take some time, uh, I'm just simulating that by triggering the end after five seconds. Okay, so if we look at our app, what we're doing is the user clicks or uploads or does whatever it is that they're doing. It's showing that it's loading regardless of the session. So if I refresh the page, I could log out, log into another app, oh, sorry, log into another device. Um, it's still going to show loading until that that backend workflow in action end has been triggered. Okay. What we want to do is I'm going to delete that for now, and I'm just going to show you an example for a webhook. So I've just created a um, just an API um, trigger in Postman. Okay, and what I'm saying is that save this. API post, we're scheduling the inaction end workflow. Okay, so let's say um, a user clicks on the button. It's always going to show loading, regardless of the session or the page load or the device, because it's, it's linked to this user. It's always going to show loading, and you could be waiting for a third party API. And then that, that webhook comes through and now it's been completed. Okay, so that's really, really um, handy uh, if you have some, you're waiting on third-party data. Okay, so another great thing that you could add is an alert. Okay, so let's say on our front end, we've, we've scheduled off uploading files, which is our back-end workflow here, and we've started, uh, we've triggered our inaction start, and that's, Basically, what we've done to set this up is just created an option set called inaction, and you can create as many of these as your app requires. So I've I've got one called uploading files, processing data, processing data. You could have a bunch of these different things that people do within your app that take a long period of time. Okay, so I've just then attached those option sets to a user. Um, which is inaction, which is a list of inactions. Okay, so basically we're just adding and removing this option set to the user and then showing um, um, UI elements um, based on whether this has started and whether it's completed. Okay, so um, we've scheduled our uploading files back in workflow which is here, and we've triggered our start workflow, which adds the inaction that we sent 
which was uploading files. And then when it's completed, oh, we're removing it. Okay, and then on our front end, we've got on our button, when current users in action contains uploading files, we're showing loading. And I've also got a, a um, spinner icon here that says current users action contains uploading, we're showing that element. Okay, so I'll just show you that again. Because the current user has the in action uploading files that I created as an option set has been added to my database for that user. Okay, the other cool thing that you could do is um, create alerts. Okay, so let's just create an option set called alert. And we're going to create, oops, sorry, option set. Uh, let's just create a new one called alert. And we're going to show an alert for uploading, uploading users. Now we can go back to our user database. And we're going to create a new field called alerts, which is a list of alerts. Okay, so now on our backend workflow, we when our action ends, okay, so whenever we have completed this workflow, we've received the webhook or your backend workflow is completed. We're going to remove the inaction and we're just going to add the alert to that user. And now on our front end, we could do something like uh, do when a condition is true. Every time the current user's alert contains uploading users, I'm just using the toast alert plugin. We can say your users have been uploaded. Oh. I'll just quickly style this. And then we just want to make sure that we remove the alert, remove uploading users. Okay, so you can just create a bunch of these throughout your app, um, basically saying whenever the user contains whatever action they have completed, um, we're then going to show an alert. And this way it's, it's across your app. So for example, if Okay, we've already triggered that, so let's just end that. And there's our alert. So if we if we start this off, um, and the user logs out, logs into another device, and I've just created a new page, so they don't always have to be um, where they they started their action. They could be anywhere in your app. So we've gone to a new page, doing other things. It doesn't matter. It could be a week, month. A year later, it doesn't matter, whenever this web comes through from your third party app. Oh, sorry. So we just copy this page. So um, we're just going to show that alert on this page. So Okay, so let's start that off. Okay, the user can do whatever they want. They can leave, log out. Then once your backend workflow or you've received a third party, um, third party webhook, then the user is going to be showing that that action has been completed. So if I do this and I go to my new page, 
Okay, and then the backend workflow has been completed. There's my alert. Um, so you could do uh, things, anything you want in this inaction end. Okay, so I've just told my app to show an alert and to complete that, that action. Okay, so you could, uh, whenever this um, inaction has been completed, um, we're showing an alert on the front end, but you could send the user an email um, and you could pass any data uh, through that you receive from the webhook or from your completed um, workflow here. So let's say, for example, we want to send an email to the user. We could say user's email. Um, you've uploaded uh, and we can send any sort of data so let's say we've got here users which is a number and from our webhook let's just reinitialize this and we're going to say users count and we're going to say 10 Okay, so we're just we're receiving this data from our webhook. Uh, we just need to pass through that data, and we're going to send an email. You've uploaded users to your account. Okay, so now whenever completed that should be all good now uh, just take the initialize out okay so the user has triggered an action um, which has triggered a back-end workflow and now it's waiting for a webhook to complete which could be an infinite amount of time okay and then well, app receives that webhook. Your users have been uploaded. You have uploaded 10 users to your account. And there's the email. Okay, guys, I hope that's helped. Be a better understanding of how to control your front end UI um, based on back end workflows or receiving. Um, webhooks from third-party applications. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye.